Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and in today's tutorial I will show you how to create a flat landscape wallpaper for your computer using only GIMP. Now the wallpaper that you're looking at in the background here is what I created, and I'll be the first to admit I am not the greatest uh, artist, but one of the nice things about the uh, the whole flat UI thing is that you can create something that's pretty decent and not be that great of a artist. And uh, you know I am sure that once I kind of go through this uh, this tutorial, show you how I created this, there's going to be a lot of you out there that see it and say, okay, now that you know I got the ideas of how you're doing things I can do a whole lot better I guarantee there's gonna be plenty of you that uh, that can do better than I did but it at least gets the you know the creative juices flowing and gives you some ideas of what you can do completely using free software so uh, let's just get started and, uh, and fire up GIMP and see what we can do so the first thing we're going to do is fire up GIMP and after we do that we are going to create a new image and for our image size we're going to make that 1920 by 1080 which is the same size as my screen resolution and I'm going to make my X and Y resolution so we're going to set those at 300 pixels per inch and I'm going to fill with the background color and I'm going to set my background color as this cream color click OK there so that gives us our background so now for the for the uh, parts of the image that are closest to us, I'm going to make it this dark brown, and I'm going to go over to the right hand side and right click, create a new layer, and let's do, we'll just call that layer one. And looking at that right hand side, you can see layer one is on top of the background. So I'm going to use this lasso tool and I'm just going to outline the, uh, the the terrain and you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute wrap around make a circle and then go over and click fill with foreground color and you can see it's now filled with that dark brown that I selected earlier so now we're going to make another layer called we'll just call it layer 2 and it's going to be between layer 1 and the background and we're going to make it slightly lighter this time and once again I'm using the lasso tool to create the outline of the mountains and we're going to fill it with that that lighter brown and you can see things kind of taking shape here and we're going to make another layer And once again, now it's between I've moved layer three between layer two and the background. We're going even lighter again. And let's make our next mountainous layer. And just like before, we're filling it in. There we go. And yeah I know this is repeating a lot but so there's layer four which will be between the background and layer three and these are going to be our final mountain layers and which will be the ones that you see in the far background now if you make a mistake there's a couple different ways you can fix it one is while you're using the lasso tool if you kind of halfway through kind of screw up you can just hit the escape button and uh, it cancels out what you've you what you've marked off with the lasso so far if you've already finished uh, using the lasso tool and and uh, you need to make a change you can go up to the edit button and undo the last thing that you did and that kind of applies to any action that you do anything that you that you do in GIMP if you make a mistake you just oh, okay uh, go up hit the undo button and it erases essentially the last thing that you did so anyway here we go we went with an even lighter color filled in again 
So with the mountains completed, the next thing that we're going to do is add the highlights that you see in the mountains in the background. So we're going to add a layer mask to that layer 4. And once again, we'll use the lasso tool and you'll, and you'll kind of see where this is going as I do it. So let's mark the area on the uh, on these mountains where I want those highlights to, to appear. And then we're going to just circle back to the uh, to the beginning of, of where that lasso started, and and it's okay that we we mark some area in the sky because you'll see why in just a second. So now if we, we got that area marked, and we're going to fill it in with the paint or the uh, paint bucket tool. And as you can see, I'll hit select none. You can see it has only highlighted uh, the area that uh, that you see in that main layer so it, it had no effect on the transparent areas of, of that layer which is essentially what the layer mask does now there's other things that you can do with the layer mask but for the purposes of what we're doing here that uh, you know that that's basically all you need to know so as you can see I did it with the with the other mountains there and uh, as they say that's all she wrote next thing I'm going to do is start making the tree so I made another layer for our first layer of trees and I put that between layer one and layer two and I had gone out online and I found some brushes that were in the shape of trees and just do a you know gimp brushes tree search and you'll find all kinds of stuff out there so pick out some trees that you like or a tree and then we're going to put some trees in place and randomize the shape and the position of them as, as I'm doing here. Then once we do that we're going to right click on that layer and do alpha to selection which selects everything in that layer that is not transparent. So it did that and we're going to match the color to our, our first layer and then we're going to fill it in with that particular color let's do a select none and boom there are the trees that are closest to us so now let's do that again for layer two of trees and if you want if you click on the little eyeball buttons there it'll get rid uh, well it doesn't get rid of the layer but the layer is no longer visible so if you want to kind of get things out of your way as you're working you can do that so we're working on the next layer of trees and and uh, you want to shrink them down a bit because they're farther away so they, they need to appear smaller and once again make them kind of random that sort of thing and again we'll do the same thing alpha to selection we'll color match it to the to that particular layer of the terrain and boom there we go so now let's take a look at what we got so far and as you can see it gives us the next layer so now let's do our next tree layer once again we'll shrink down quite a bit because we're getting pretty far away now Again, we'll do the alpha to selection and we'll use the dropper to color match to that layer and fill with that color select none let's look at what we got so far looking good all right let's make some clouds now and we'll make our first cloud layer and let's see uh, yeah I'll put this one between um, uh, basically between the mountains and the background 
and once again we'll use the lasso tool just kind of sketch out the shape that you want for the cloud and we're going to fill it with pure white you will use the bucket tool to fill this time and as you can see that kind of, that cloud is partially behind the mountain so that's that's part of the reason that I put that that layer there I wanted some of the uh, some of the cloud to uh, be hidden by the mountain and as you see I kind of screwed that one up so that's why you know like I mentioned before hit the escape button and boom it's gone there we go that's more what I'm looking for let's fill it in again all right I'm gonna make another cloud layer call that clouds front just so I can keep things organized and we'll move it up so it's the the closest layer to you and as they say there's a method to the madness and uh, let me put a cloud in here and you can see because of the position of the layer uh, that cloud is in front of the mountain so that's that was my reasoning for putting the uh, putting that layer there. Now I wanted to put some birds in it, so I went and I found out I found some uh, some uh, bird brushes for GIMP, and uh, kind of had to play around a little bit to get the size and and the the shape, the style, that sort of thing, to get it the way that I wanted. Uh, took a little playing around, but uh, I finally got what I wanted. I didn't want the birds to be a big part of the image, but uh, I still wanted to include it in there. So I got that in, and then kind of looking at it, I, I wanted a couple of trees that uh, maybe would be like really, really close to you. So I went back and added a couple more trees in, and uh, put them in the in the front tree layer, and just went really, really big on that uh, on the brush size. And that is it. Now, like I said, I am not the, the greatest artist, and there's probably a lot of you out there that, having watched this video, you'll be able to do a better job than I did. Uh, but hopefully it gives you some ideas what you can do, and uh, you know you can create something that is very much your personal uh, uh, wallpaper so you don't have something that uh, everybody else out there has. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give us a big old thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, as always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, and I hope to see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.